Hello and welcome to the Super Size Phys Ed Podcast. I'm Dave, I'm your host, and I'm glad you're here. So today I want to talk about one of my favorite um, slash embarrassing stories about um, something I didn't know about students in PE. So let me give you a transition beat to think about that, and then we'll get back to this. Here we go. All right, so when I started teaching PE nine years ago, I didn't know a whole lot. I really didn't. I, I mean, I was a physical, um, sorry, I was a, I was a classroom teacher for about 10 years, mostly fourth and fifth grade, a little bit of second, um, but I didn't know how to, I don't know how to teach PE. Now, I, I was a personal trainer in North Carolina for about three or four years, I, so I studied up a lot of stuff. Um, I, I knew exercise in general. My friend and I ran kids camps up in North Carolina for a few years. So we knew, you know, I mean, I knew how to teach. He was a PE teacher, so he helped me out. But in general, I didn't know what I was doing. I really didn't. And especially the first couple of years. Now, the thing, one of the things that turned me around on just PE, the way I looked at it, I guess, is my wife. Now, we, like, I used to, this is not a dodgeball debate. I, I just, I say that a lot. This is not a dodgeball debate. But this turned me around on the way I think about PE. So when I had a discussion with her about, about dodgeball and just the controversy there, let's just say, there's controversy. There's always controversy. And, you know, she said to me, she goes, because I loved dodgeball when I was a kid. I absolutely positively loved, loved dodgeball. And I was good at it too. I was really good. And, and I'm not saying I was like this top athlete. I was, I mean, I was, I was good. I wasn't great. I wasn't phenomenal. I was a, you know, I was good at a lot of things, but I wasn't phenomenal. So I'm not going <laughs> to say that. But I loved, for the most part, I loved PE. Um, the only time I didn't was swimming in high school. It wasn't my favorite, and it was kind of weird. But um, anyways, I, I loved PE. Now, she told me, and this blew me away, that she hated PE. That blew me away. I couldn't, I just couldn't. I'm like, well, why? She's like, well, I ha- she hated dodgeball. She hid behind the poles, you know, the basketball poles. She um, would fake being sick to, when she was older um, to get out of PE, you know, with notes and things and whatever. And she absolutely didn't, she didn't like PE at all. And that blew me away. And that really changed the way I thought about, you know, teaching physical education. Because if she didn't like it, and then and she never said anything to anybody, like she didn't tell the teacher or anything like that, she just kind of like slowly opted out of it or, or did what she could to get out of it, and I, you know, I, I, I just it was like a, it was like a light bulb went off in my head. I'm like, I have to make sure that I am including all the students. Now it's not easy, and I have 130 kids at a time or whatever, so it's not always you know there are kids that are you know not the most motivated PE kids. And, you know, I need to figure out a way to get to them, to, to make them enjoy or help them to enjoy moving and learning and just having fun and, and, and interacting with their peers. And that's not always easy, but it's our job. And so when you create lessons, when you create um, different variations of games, when you create differentiated instruction, keep those in mind, the kids that are not as motivated in PE the kids that do not enjoy or do not seem to enjoy PE, the kids that are always on the bench or wherever you have saying they're sick, keep those students in mind and do your best to include them. Now, there are since there's four of us out there, I have three assistants, three paras, there are certain students that I know that honestly don't like me very much. And I, I try my hardest and I, I'm going to keep trying, but they respond better to, let's say, a female coach or my other male coach. You know, or just in general, they might have a different relationship with them than I do. So I will send the other para over and say, hey, can you talk to so-and-so for a minute, please? Because they're, you know, um, either not engaged in it or something's wrong and they, won't, they don't want to talk about it and that's okay. But I'm thinking, you know, we, we, we help them with, in different ways. We figure out what is their, you know, where, where, how do we get to them in a positive way. So anyways, when you come up with lessons... And when you think of the kids in your class, 
don't discard the you know the kids not playing. Don't just say, well, okay, well, sorry, that's just if they don't like it, then I don't understand why. Okay, learn to engage them, focus on them. I know it's hard because you have all these other students. Figure out what makes them tick, and go from there. So that is going to be a quick five minute or so tip. But something I was thinking about, you know, inclusion for all. That's the name of this episode because, and I'm not just talking about their different colors and their different shapes and sizes. I'm just talking about in general, just kids. They need to be included. They need to feel like they're part of a team. And it's our job to make them feel that way. So that is your, your episode for today. <laughs> it's a short one, but I want to give you some really quick hitters. Take care. Have a great day. And here is an old beat for you.